Is there life beyond Earth? Humankind has always asked itself this question, but no answer has yet been found. However, thanks to the latest advances in space technology, it appears that we are closer to solving this mystery. Recent discoveries have uncovered planets beyond our solar system that are believed to be similar in many ways to Earth. If I got to ride on a spaceship to one planet that we found with Kepler, the one that I would go to was Kepler 186F. It's one of the smallest ones. Uh, it's at the right temperature um, that liquid water could exist on its surface. Kepler 186F is the first validated Earth-sized planet to orbit a distant star in the habitable zone, where liquid water might pool on the planet's surface. The discovery of Kepler 186F confirms that Earth-sized planets exist in the habitable zones of other stars and signals a significant step closer to finding a world similar to Earth. Kepler 186F orbits its star once every 130 days and receives one-third the energy that Earth does from the Sun, placing it near the outer edge of the habitable zone. If you could stand on the surface of Kepler 186F, the brightness of its star at high noon would appear as bright as our sun is about an hour before sunset on Earth. Before Kepler was launched, there was hundreds of planets that we knew of in systems around other stars, and now we know of thousands. And that's why Kepler was so revolutionary. Kepler is a space telescope specifically designed to survey our region of the Milky Way galaxy to discover Earth-size and smaller planets in or near the habitable zone of their respective stars and determine the fraction of the hundreds of billions of stars in our galaxy that might have such planets. It works very simply. I mean, anybody can understand this. It's just, it's just staring at one spot on the sky all the time, never blinks. And it's looking at 150,000 stars. And it just monitors how bright they are, kind of like a camera light meter, really. And occasionally, they'll see a, 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 this star over here, for example. It'll get a little bit dimmer, a very fraction of a percent dimmer for a few hours, and then it'll get bright again. Well, that happens if a planet passes in front of that star. We've gone from finding 100 planets to over 1,000 planets with Kepler, those that have been confirmed. And there's about three or 4,000 more, which, which we have strong evidence for, but we wouldn't consider confirmed planets just yet. Kepler is on the hunt for planets. Kepler has found literally thousands of planets or planetary candidates. It's, it's a planet-finding machine. In 2011, for the first time ever, Kepler provided scientists with an astonishing calculation of the number of stars in our galaxy that could have a planet like ours. Around a billion. Maybe there are a million, maybe there are a billion, maybe there are a hundred billion planets in the Milky Way galaxy that could support life, the kind of planets that earthly life could survive on. How many of them have cooked up their own life? And we don't know the answer to that, okay? Because that depends on how hard it is to get life started. Just because I give you all these, you know, these worlds doesn't mean that life will get started. But on the other hand, those planets are all made out of the same stuff that Earth is. So again, unless something very unusual happened here and nowhere else, there's gonna be biology all over the place. On April 2013, just four years after its launch, the Kepler team reported one of their first great triumphs. The discovery, for the first time ever, of two exoplanets very similar to the Earth, Kepler 62e and Kepler 62f. This discovery created great enthusiasm as it implied the confirmation of Earth-like planets where life might be possible. These planets have a radius 1.6 and 1.4 times that of Earth and orbit Kepler-62, an orange dwarf star, in its circumstellar habitable zone. 
A modeling study also concluded that Kepler-62e and Kepler-62f are likely covered, perhaps completely, in water. Kepler-62e probably has a very cloudy sky and is warm and humid all the way to the polar regions. Kepler-62f would be cooler, but still potentially life-friendly. Unfortunately, they are at a huge distance of 1,200 light-years away in the constellation of Lyra. Thanks to the Kepler mission, we now know that there are tens of billions of planets orbiting stars in our galaxy alone. And we know that there are billions of galaxies across the universe. So, if in just one planetary system like ours, life arose on one planet, and there are at least four more candidates, the likelihood of finding a planet in outer space that could harbor life should be very high. But Kepler has discovered for us not only the existence of Earth-like planets, but also has provided amazing data about the universe such as the confirmation of the existence of planets that orbit around not only one, but two stars, like Kepler-16b. This planet was Kepler's first discovery of a planet that orbits two stars, what is known as a circumbinary planet. So one of the most exciting discoveries from Kepler was that we were actually able to find planets around binary stars. And the first one that was found was Kepler-16b. Kepler-16b is many people's favorite planet that was discovered with Kepler. Uh, it orbits around not one, but two stars at the same time. This was something which was predicted not to exist. Two stars setting at the same time was just a piece of science fiction. But the universe is stranger than what scientists can imagine, and it turns out that this sort of thing is true. Since 1992, over 2,000 exoplanets have been discovered. Thanks to future space telescope missions planned for launch, the number of observed exoplanets is expected to increase greatly in the coming years. Despite having discovered just a tiny fraction of all those billions of exoplanets we think exist, how could we know how many of them could harbor life? In astronomy and astrobiology, the region around a star, where a planet with sufficient atmospheric pressure can maintain liquid water on its surface, is known as the circumstellar habitable zone. The habitable zone is a place, it's kind of a way of thinking about the right way to go look for planets like our own. The Earth is obviously in the circumstellar habitable zone of our solar system. A potentially habitable planet implies a terrestrial planet with conditions roughly comparable to those of Earth and thus potentially favorable to life. There's a, there's a sweet spot, an area where it's not too hot and not too cold, and we call that the habitable zone or some people call that the Goldilocks zone. If you've got a planet in that regime, and if it's small, if it's rocky enough, and it had water, that water would be in a liquid state, more than likely. So that would be a good place to go looking. 